Hey, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we're going to go through payback calculation. How do we calculate the payback period? All right, we are going to go through what is payback period and talk about how we calculate it. Then we'll go into Excel and actually look at the formula for a simple payback and how you do it, and then how you deal with the more common, but also slightly more complex, uneven cash flows. And then we'll talk about when you should use payback and wrap things up. A payback period is really a pretty simple and straightforward concept, and it's how you can evaluate an investment, something like a capital project or some other use of cash or investment that you're looking at doing. And what it really does is it tells you how long it would take you, the investor, or your company to recoup the investment. And we measure this in months or years. Typically, you're going to see it in years. You'll find that it's actually pretty similar to a break-even analysis if you're familiar with that. So let's get into a little more detail. So a shorter payback is better, right? If you can invest your money and get it back in one year, that's a lot better than getting it back in five years. A super simple example here would be if you invested $100 and you have a cash flow of $50 per year for two years, your payback would be exactly two years. It would take you two years to get that $50 back. But it gets more complicated when you have uneven cash flows. So say you don't have just $50 a year every year. You can't just do a simple division problem. It gets slightly more complicated. So let's jump to an Excel example. All right, so here we are in the Excel. Again, this is a very easy example with even cash flows. So if you had a $400,000 initial investment, you had an annual cash flow of 100,000, you can see how easy this is. You're just gonna take your initial investment divided by your annual cash flow, and that's gonna give you your payback. So here you've got a four year payback. So it's just your investment divided by your annual cash flow. <clears throat> okay, now the example that's way more likely for you to encounter and where you'll see this so often is when people are doing their capital budgeting, their capital expenditures, they're trying to evaluate through an investment company, should we buy this asset? You will see payback pretty commonly used and, and it's often used in conjunction with other metrics, but we'll get into that at the end. So here we have an example where we have an invest, initial, initial investment, again, of 400,000, and here are your cash flows. So they're not the same each year. So really what you wanna look at to get to this is how much of my investment is unrecovered at the end of the year? So you can see here we have 400,000 and 95,000 of cash flow that first year, so you have 305 left. So that's gonna be a year. And now you go through the same thing you have 120,000 cash flow, so that 305 minus your 120 leaves you with 185. So that's another year. The next year's cash flow is 125. You have 60,000 left. So now you're at a low cash flow or low unrecovered investment amount. You probably are anticipating, given how your cash flows are going, you're going to pay it off the next year. So this final year cash flow here is 175. And that tells you that you've over recovered. So 175 is more than 60. So when you get to that last year, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the 60,000 divided by the 175. And that's gonna give you approximately the portion of a year that it takes to recover that 60,000. So here it's about a third of the year. So you add that up and you get to 3.34 years. So. In summary here, one year for each year the project does not fully recover the initial investment, and then for the year that recovers beyond that initial investment, divide that unrecovered by that year's cash flow. So when do you use payback? So like I mentioned, you often use this when you're doing an evaluation of a capital project, buying a new piece of equipment or machinery, that's when you're going to see this most frequently, but it could be when buying a business or something more complicated as well. But remember, this should not be used as a standalone metric. You should not be evaluating a capital project based solely on payback. It's just a supporting metric. And you have to remember that payback doesn't consider the time value of money. And that's something that's very important. So you want to use this in conjunction with something like discounted cash flow, you know, NPV, 
you can use IRR, and I want to show you just a quick reason why. So we're back in this Excel, and you remember we had this example where we had this 3.34 year payback on this capital project that we're, we're evaluating. Now, as you sneak down here, you can see the, the NPV of that project is, at an 8% discount rate is $17,000. So that's a positive NPV, that's a good thing, 3.34. Depends on what your company's uh, threshold is or requirement is for payback, but that's not too bad. But just want to give you an example of why you wouldn't do this independently. So if you look at this one down here, this has a 2.83 year payback. And all I did was I took these cash flows and I flipped them upside down. So instead of 175 being the last year, I put it in the first year. Now this has the same total number of cash flows it doesn't really move the payback too much, but it almost doubles the NPV. So this is a this would be a way better investment, but it barely shows as better in the payback, whereas the NPV is double. So that's just an example of why you wouldn't use payback as a standalone metric, but it is helpful to still gauge how long it takes to get your cash back. So that example really does bring it home it's a good metric, but it's not a standalone metric. You gotta have something else with it, NPV, IRR, something along those lines. So that's it. Payback is a fairly straightforward metric. It is a good tool to have in your toolkit. It's good to use when you're evaluating capital projects. Uh, that's it, that's all we have for today. Please leave comments or questions and make sure you hit the like button and also be sure you subscribe.